Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2018 Premier Auction. Today we have a Court PRS, uh, spelled Korth, but uh, if you're going to use the proper German pronunciation it would be Kort, or something vaguely like that. At any rate, this is a gun that's relatively well known mostly for its cost. Um, Kort is basically a little boutique firearms manufacturer in Germany. They've been around since the 1950s, primarily manufacturing really, really good, really, really expensive revolvers. And in 2015 they introduced a semi-automatic pistol to their product line. Uh, they sell this in three different barrel lengths, 4, 5, and 6 inch. This is the 4 inch version. And what they have done here is made a hybrid of a 1911 and the classic German system, a roller locked gun. So this is actually a roller delayed blowback 45 auto pistol. It's really pretty cool. So let's take a look at the mechanics. Let's begin by pointing out that the lower is basically a 1911, and a lot of, if not all, uh, standard 1911 parts for the frame actually fit and are interchangeable, although none of them are going to be as well made as the ones that Court makes. So things like grip safeties, uh, mainspring housings, the spring itself, the fire control parts, the trigger. Um, these are all standard 1911 pattern parts. Um, the magazine is a Court branded magazine, and the manual says to only use their mags. I'm pretty sure that this is just a stock 1911 magazine. However, I'm also pretty sure that if you actually try to shoot this with some ratty GI surplus magazine, uh, the, the Teutonic gods of Germanness will strike you down with a lightning bolt from the sky. Uh, just to point out, uh, I'm going to try and point out some of the, just the little indicators of the quality of this gun as we go through. And an interesting one is the magazine release. I'm holding the gun perfectly flat, and if I just hit the mag release it literally spits the magazine completely out of the gun. Uh, that's not normal. That requires some really exact fit and finish. But that's just a gimmick. Let's get on to the serious things. It is marked Waffenfabrik Court, Germany. This one is, let's see, we have a serial number there. CIP is uh, proofing, European Union proofing, and it is also proofed on the bottom of the frame there. And it has that Court logo on the left side of the slide. And lastly, it is in 45 auto. A couple of Court did go the extra mile on their magazines, and they actually have the witness holes numbered, and then they've got their logo on the magazine as well. Disassembly requires pulling the slide back until the slide stop lever lines up with these cutouts in the frame, and then we can push the slide stop out. I'm going to poke it through with something plastic. The fit is basically perfect. Then slide goes forward and comes off the front of the gun. We can then take the barrel assembly, pull it forward and out, recoil spring, barrel, and then we have a breech block in here that we can also take out. Uh, this is how they recommend taking it down for field stripping. I'm going to go one step further and take the breech block out, because that's where all the interesting bits are. There's a cross pin right here. You can only push it out from one side. So there is the breech block pin, and then let's push the breech block forward. This is one of those pieces, in fact there are a bunch of these in this gun, where it looks tight when I'm taking this apart on camera, and it is tight, but it's not tight because we just pressed it in and made it fit. It is tight because this is the exact fit that we wanted for this part. So there's the whole thing field stripped. Now let's take a look at how this breech system works. So the whole point of doing this, instead of using the browning system, is to improve accuracy by having a fixed barrel. That's uh, you will always have 
better accuracy for an equal cost gun, or an equal quality gun, if it has a fixed barrel as opposed to a barrel that moves. And that's, that's pretty basic reasoning right there. So if you have a fixed barrel, you need to... you have a limited number of options for how to make the gun work. Uh, recoil is out, because recoil requires the barrel to move. You could have a gas-operated gun, although gas operation is generally clunky to put into pistols, and you generally only see it on very large pistols, things like the Wilde or the Desert Eagle. Uh, and that leaves you with delayed blowback. Well, or simple blowback, but simple blowback in a 45 means you get a high point. Um, delayed blowback becomes the probably the best mechanism. So then you have to pick a form of delaying mechanism. And Kort, being Germans, went for roller delayed. So the way this works is that we have rollers in each side of the bolt head, right there. So one on the left, one on the right. Those are going to lock into two recesses on the breech. So the trunnion here is fixed to the barrel. This is going to slide in here to right there, and then those rollers are going to be pushed out into those two recesses, and that holds the bolt head closed. So this is the configuration when it's actually locked in battery. The bolt head and the rear half of the bolt uh, are flush together. The rollers are protruding out the side of the bolt head, and you can't push them in while maintaining contact between these two parts. Two par as long as this lever is down, these two parts can't quite come all the way together, and that means the firing pin can't protrude far enough to actually hit a primer. In order to fire, this lever has to be lifted up, which then allows it to clear that little detent. Then the firing pin can go far enough to actually fire the thing. Now I've got the firing pin out here. But uh, what does that in the gun is this angled surface right here. So when the slide is chambering a new cartridge, this is going to come in like this. The bolt head right here hits that ramp. That's going to force the lever up, and that allows the bolt to close and lock. That is a safety mechanism that prevents the gun from ever firing if it's not fully in battery with the rollers engaged. In fact, you can see the rollers sticking out right there. Now, when it fires, you have a lot of rearward pressure of the cartridge pushing on the bolt head here. That force is going to be transmitted into these rollers pushing on this locking wedge. And because of the angle on the wedge right there, the force pushing back on the bolt is divided into two vectors. Some of the force is going to go outwards into the side of the slide, and some of it is going to go rearward. That rearward force is going to open the slide, open the breech, and cycle the whole thing. But because some of that energy has been redirected outwards into the side of the slide, uh, the breech opens at a slower rate than if it didn't have this roller mechanism, uh, a slow enough rate that it is safe, and by the time the cartridge is being pulled out of the chamber, uh, the pressure is low enough that it cycles safely. Uh, this is the basically the exact same system that you have in the HK line of rifles, the MP5, the G3, and all of, all of the other guns in that family. This is not the same as what's in the CZ-52 pistol. Um, I'll leave that to a separate video, but the CZ-52 is actually a fully locked breech, where this is delayed blowback. The result of all this is a nice functional semi-automatic pistol with a pleasant recoil impulse that is also very accurate because of its fixed barrel, and chambered for a relatively powerful cartridge in the 45 ACP. A couple other little details I want to point out. In most guns, this recoil spring would be just a plain wound recoil spring, but not for court. So if I put it on the barrel, uh, this is the correct direction. And I know that because back here we have a nice fit over the barrel. If I flip it around and put it on backwards, this has a little bit more wobble, because they actually wound the spring conically so it fits snug over the barrel at the back end, and then it expands for where it has to go sit in the front of the slide, so that you have a little bit of play when you put the barrel in the slide. If you've ever uh, put the taken the slide off of a uh, plain blowback fixed barrel pistol like a Makarov, you've almost certainly run into little issues of trying to align the barrel and the spring in the end of the slide. And Court 
put in the extra, the extra care and the extra uh, effort to make the spring conical so that that's not an issue. I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what the process is that results in that rainbow pattern, some sort of oil quenching maybe, but it's in a couple of places and it's really pretty. It's kind of a shame it's not on the outside of the gun where you can see it. All of the tolerancing on this pistol is fantastic. Everything slides exactly where it should be with exactly the right amount of play to give you the proper fit. You'll notice it's pretty snug sliding that into position, and I'll tell you what, that means it just does not move. And there is a remarkable amount of effort and skill and quality that has to go into doing that. Um, got the firing pin here as well that ought to go in. The firing pin is, its travel is limited by uh, this little waist in it, which sits in this pinhole, and this pin prevents the firing pin from going too far in, or uh, backing out of the gun. Even little elements like this pin are just very finely finished. Snick. This isn't a normal pin, it doesn't, you know, slide in, tap it in, or it's a little loose, a little loose or a little tight. No, it is exactly the right size. I'm going to put my own claim to the test here and first try putting in the barrel. Boom. That's that conical spring. Another little subtle element here that you don't really notice unless you're taking the gun apart. The 1911 normally has rails just on the back half. In order to improve the consistency of the fit, Court added rails to their barrel and the front of their slide, rail sections right there, which fit in grooves that they have cut right here in the front end of the frame. So that slides on right there and back like that. Reassembly, all I have to do is slide this all the way back and replace the slide stop pin. The one thing that kind of bugs me about this is they have the same sort of detent here that the 1911 does, which is going to, it's just going to encourage the idiot mark on slides. Uh, so I am going to kind of do this as a three-handed affair and use a plastic uh, pen cap to push in that detent. So the slide fit is exactly what you would expect on a gun with this sort of reputation. It definitely lives up to that. The trigger pull is very short and crisp. Uh, maybe too short for a, a combat style of pistol, uh, too light, but ooh, it is nice to shoot. I think there's a really strong tendency for people to take a pistol like this and really want to denigrate it for being pointless. Uh, and there is a legitimate question of what does this gun do that other things don't? Um, uh, is it going to be a carry gun? Almost certainly not. Is it a military gun? No. Is it a competition gun? Well, you know, if, if you look at the sights, no. It has sights that are not even remotely close to what you would want for serious marksmanship competition. This is really, by all standards, a luxury product. It is something you get because it is really nice. And no matter how much you want to, uh, people may want to lash out at folks who do that, who spend money on luxury frivolities. At the same time, you cannot deny the actual quality of the machining that went into this. There was a tremendous amount of skill and workmanship that's required to create this. And my initial impressions with something like this are always a little bit skeptical. It's like, well, okay, how much of this is convincing people to spend a lot of money, and how much of it is actual substance? Because there are plenty of luxury products out there that are all hype and all brand, and ultimately just not all that special. This is not one of them. The machining, the mechanics, the production quality in this is absolutely up to the hype. Um, and in fact, in some ways, the cost on these doesn't really even start to come close to the actual quality of the product. Um, you can't really make get this across on camera because so much of it is tactile. How does the gun actually feel? And you can come up with cliches like, well, it feels like butter, or it breaks like glass. Uh, this is a magnificently high quality pistol. It, it lives up to all of those cliches, as kind of tired and worn out as they are. The gun itself is 
magnificent. The question is, is it the gun for you? Is it something that you can justify purchasing? And that's why Court is a small boutique gun maker. It's because this is not a mass market thing. It's not for everybody, and that's fine. It doesn't have to be. Uh, but there are people for whom the money is not as important as the pride of ownership for something like this. And so for those people, there are guns like the Court PRS. If that sounds like it might be you, of course, this one is coming up for sale here. Uh, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link to Rock Island's catalog page for this gun, where you can see their pictures and description, uh, and a link if you'd like to place a bid on it online through their website. Or alternatively, you can come here to Rock Island, Illinois, and participate in the auction live. Thanks for watching.